Hey there guys, welcome back to DevDreamer and in this lesson we're looking at the CSS shadow property. So with CSS, we're given two properties that we can use to apply shadows to both text as well as elements. And those are the text shadow property and the box shadow property. So let's take a look at both of those in detail as well as using some examples along the way. First then, let's take a look at the text shadow property. So first we need some text on our screen. So I'm actually going to do a h1 here and give this an ID of text hyphen shadow. And let's just say dev dreamer. Go to our CSS file. And now we can select ID of text shadow. And first, let's just increase the size of this and put it into the middle. So we'll do font size. Just do our usual 50 pixels. Text align will be center. Um, and let's just move it down as well a little from there. So we'll do margin top and about 100 pixels. Yep, that's fine. And I'm actually just going to bump this up to 70 pixels. Okay, so to give this text a shadow effect then, we need to use the text hyphen shadow property. And this can be given four values. The first value specifies the width of the shadow going to the right. The second property specifies the width of the shadow going down. The third value specifies the blur of that shadow. And finally, the fourth value specifies the color of that shadow. Okay, and obviously we don't write it like this, I'm just showing you these just so you can follow along. So first then, let's specify the width of our shadow going to the right of our text. So let's just say we want this to be five pixels. Going down, let's say we also want this to be five pixels. In fact, let's change this. Let's make this just uh, two pixels. Now the next one, blur, indicates how blurry or how in focus our shadow is. Um, so the best way to show you this is just by including a color here as well. So we'll just say red. And for the blur, let's just say one pixel. Okay, so now we have something on our screen. So let's just zoom in. So what we have here then is we have a text shadow, a red text shadow, which is five pixels going to the right, just two pixels going down. As you can see, there's more of a width going across to the right there as opposed to going down. So this is five pixels, this is two pixels down. The blur is one pixel, which is why it's quite solid. It's not very blurry. And of course the color is red. Let's now play around with these figures and we'll see how this uh, how this changes. So first, let's mess around with the um, blur figure here. Let's change this to 10, let's see what happens. Okay, now you can see it's starting to look a bit more like a shadow. So we've still got that red shadow effect there, but now it's, uh, it's a lot more blurry. And we can even increase this to say 30 pixels. And that's now very blurry, it's just a color behind the text now. I think I'm gonna set this to five pixels. Okay, that's fine. Now let's take a look at this property here, which specifies how far down we want this to go. So if we set this to 20 pixels, you can see this is now going right the way down versus say one pixel, sorry, one pixel, which of course is a lot less. For this example here, we're gonna keep this to two. And once again, this first figure here specifies the width of our shadow going to the right. So if we were to change this to say 25 pixels, as you can see now it's going 25 pixels to the right. Once again, let's just set this to five pixels and I'm actually gonna change this red to gray. That looks a lot better. And this really gives a nice 3D effect, doesn't it? It really looks like the lettering here is actually jumping out from the page. Really, really cool. Okay, so now that we know what these figures are and, and what they mean, this is the shadow going to the right, down, the blur and the color, we can actually use the text shadow property to create an outline for our text. And for this example, I'm going to use our CSS shadows title up here. So let's just minify this. And the first thing I want to do is I want to change the color of this to something lighter, like this lime. Let's also zoom into this. Okay. So the effect that we're going for here then is not so much a shadow, but an outline going around all of our lettering. Let's see how we can do that. So we can do text shadow first, of course. And now we can specify our figures. Now, something I didn't mention was that with the text shadow property, you can actually specify more than one shadow. And that's what we're going to be using to create an outline around our characters here. So first then, we're going to specify an outline going up. Then we'll work on the right side outline, then the bottom, and then the left. So for a first shadow then, we don't want it going out to the right at all. We only want it to be going up. So for the right figure, we're going to say zero pixels. If the bottom shadow is one pixel, then 
going up, it will be minus one pixel. Now this might not make any sense, so let's just put in the color here. And for this example, we don't need to include a, a blur on this because we want the outline to be quite solid going around. So we've got zero pixels to the right, so it's directly behind our lettering. We've got minus one pixels, which is why it's now above our lettering. And if we set this to zero pixels, you'll see what I mean. So this is now directly behind it. And this one is now going down. So this is one, this is zero. And so minus one sets it up one pixel. So this then is our outline for the top of our lettering. Now we're gonna do the outline for the right side of our lettering. So here we can say, we do want it to go right by one pixel. So we can say, right one pixel. We don't want it to be top and bottom. So we can say zero pixels and the coloring of that is going to be black. So now we have an outline on the top and on the right. We don't have anything for the left or the bottom so far. So let's actually include those. And these are all comma separated as well, guys. So now let's work on the uh, bottom outline. So we've got the top here. This is the right. Now we're working on the bottom. So for the bottom, we want it to be again, zero pixels left and right. We want it to be one pixel down and we want this to be black as well. Now we have an outline at the bottom. And finally, let's work on the outline for the left. So we want this to be to the left. If one pixel was right and zero pixels are directly behind it, then left is going to be minus one pixel. Okay, we want it to be zero pixels top and bottom and we want this to be black. And now you can see we have this really cool outline effect on our letters. And if we zoom out, you can see that looks pretty cool. So it is quite long winded, but this is actually a great way to practice and understand the text shadow property because you really are manipulating those figures to get it to do exactly what you want it to do. So here we used it to create an outline. So that's the text shadow property. Next, then we want to take a look at the box shadow property. Now the box shadow property is used to apply a shadow to an element. So let's go to a HTML file and let's add a, a div and it could just be an empty div for now. That's fine. Let's select the div um, and actually just for continuity, let's call this, I'll give this an ID of box hyphen shadow. So we can select that here now. So box hyphen shadow. Let's give this a width of 200 pixels and a height of 100 pixels. Let's give it a border as well of one pixel solid black. That's fine. Uh, let's put this into the middle margin. We'll do 20 pixels top and bottom and auto. Okay. Now I do actually want this to have a curved edge. So let's just zoom in and we can say border hyphen radius, a four pixel radius. So now we've got that curved edge going all the way around. And now we specify the box shadow in much the same way. So we'd say box hyphen shadow. Once again, the first figure is gonna be the width going right. So we can say five pixels to the right. And the next one is gonna be bottom. So we can say five pixels on the bottom. There you go, we've now got our shadow forming there. We wanna give this a 10 pixel blur. And I wanna change the color of this to gray. So again, similar to how we use the text shadow property, where all these figures mean the same thing. Okay, so this is the shadow going to the right, this is the shadow going to the bottom, this is the blur, and then this is the color. And just like that, you can see now our box has a shadow. Now, somewhere where you see the box shadow used quite prominently is on buttons. So when a user hovers over a button, and very often the box shadow property is used just for this scenario. So let's go ahead and put a button onto our HTML page. And I'm just going to say sign up. Okay, go to our style.css file, select our button, and let's actually apply some style into this now then. So the first thing I want to do is font size. Let's increase the font size of this to, let's say 20 pixels. That's fine. Again, I want to put this into the middle. So I'm going to say margin, 30 pixels top and bottom, we'll say this time, and auto. I need to give this a display of block as well, okay. And it just increases to 50. Let's apply some padding to this. So remember, padding was inside, margin is outside. So we're going to do the shorthand uh, padding declaration here. So top and bottom, it's going to be five pixels. And left and right, we'll say 10 pixels. 
Let's actually go for 15 pixels. It's fine. Again, I want to give this a border radius. So border hyphen radius. Go four pixels again. Let's give it a background color as well. Um, let's give it a background color of. Let's go for a blue color. Let's go for Dodger blue. Okay, so now then, what we want to happen is when someone hovers over this, just zoom in, when someone hovers over this, we want to apply a box shadow to our button. Let's actually just quickly change the cursor as well to pointer. So now I've got this little hand here. And we only want this to apply when someone hovers over our button. So we can say button and then colon hover. And now here we can specify our box shadow. So we can say two pixels going across, two pixels down. Let's give it a five pixel blur and say it's gray. So now when we hover over this, excellent, we get our shadow. So there you have it guys. That's how to use the text shadow property and the box shadow property in CSS. Again, really cool stuff. Go ahead and practice these so you can start using them in your projects. But that's it for this lesson. If you found it useful, please hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.